On behalf of Shepherd Pratt and our Board of Trustees, thank you for joining us for our ribbon cutting ceremony. We are here to celebrate the grand opening of our state of the art Shepherd Pratt Baltimore Washington campus. My name is Hirsch Trivedi. I am president and CEO of Shepherd Pratt, the nation's largest nonprofit provider of mental health, substance use, special education, developmental disability, and social services in the nation. As much as it's the largest, what's truly important is it also means that we have access. When someone needs help, we can say yes. As much as we're opening these doors, we have 387 sites across the state where every single one of our staff members has worked throughout COVID to keep our doors open, every single program open, every single school open, to make sure that we're able to help the people that we need us. I'd like to first recognize our Board of Trustees who are in attendance. Please raise your hand in acknowledgement, and I thank you sincerely for your ongoing support. You all are the driving force that makes days like today happen, and I thank you so much for that. I'm also going to invite, a num I'm also going to welcome a number of distinguished guests. I ask that you hold your applause till the end. I'm so thankful that so many folks, uh, in terms of elected officials and important guests, are here. Uh, first of all, I want to mention the Honorable Bill Ferguson, President of the Maryland State Senate. Welcome. The Honorable. We only have like 50 more, so <laughs> I'm just, um, no, no, he definitely deserves the applause. The Honorable Guy Gazzoni, State Senator. Uh, the Honorable Katie Fry Hester, State Senator. The Honorable Jocelyn Peña Melnick, State Delegate. The Honorable Eric Ebersol, State Delegate. The Honorable Terry Hill, State Delegate. The Honorable Vanessa Atterbury, State Delegate. The Honorable Jessica Feldman, State Delegate. The Honorable Jen Terrassa, State Delegate and former member of the Howard County Council. The Honorable Calvin Ball, Howard County Executive. The Honorable Deb Jung, Howard County Council Member. Mr. Chow Wu, Howard Chair of the Howard County School Board. The Honorable Dennis Schrader, Secretary of Health. The Honorable Steve Hsu, Deputy Secretary, Department of Health and former County Executive Anne Arundel County and former member of the Maryland House of Delegates. Dr. Leah Jones, Deputy Secretary of Behavioral Health. Ms. Shandy Schrader, Deputy, Deputy Secretary, Department of Planning and former member of the State Senate. Mr. Ben Steffen, Executive Director of the MHCC. Mr. Adam Kane, uh, Chair of the HSCRC. Bob Atlas, President of the Maryland Hospital Association. And I'd also like to recognize other esteemed guests who are with us, who are here with us today, including Ms. Danielle Aquara, Director of Government and Business Affairs, representing the Honorable Dutch Ruppersberger, U.S. Congressman, Ms. Colette Gelwix, Special Assistant, representing the Honorable Councilwoman Rigby. Now we may applause. I'm going to stop for a moment and just say thank you to Danielle for bringing along this citation from Congressman Ruppersberger. We're truly lucky to have such great support from our entire delegation representing us in DC. Uh, the Congressman has worked incredibly hard to make mental health services widely available for people across the state. I apologize sincerely if I missed anyone in attendance today. And with that, uh, what I want to say most importantly is Today, we are ushering in a brand new chapter, a brand new day. We are going to be meeting more needs across our community, across our state, across our region, because we're able to open these doors. And I stand here as the President and CEO and think about what it must have been like when we opened our hospital in Towson. Did those people that day understand that more than 150 years later, Shepard Pratt is doing even more than it ever has. 
This building and what it does, the services it provides will be here decades, centuries after we are gone, but the good that it can do will outlast all of us. That's why we're here. It's important today and it's important for the long run. We're celebrating important access to much needed services in the Baltimore Washington corridor. As I speak today, our new hospital is truly one of a kind. And I know that we see different hospitals come up. When you walk through this building, I want you to know that what began as a simple, single, humble hospital in Towson, our reach extends across the state. We accept patients from every hospital, every jurisdiction in the state, but we also provide all the services across the continuum that make resources available, that make a difference in people's lives. As we take steps towards recovery from COVID-19, I say to each of you that now is the time that we have to prepare for the even larger crisis that's gonna come. There is a tidal wave of behavioral health issues that are impacting every part of our state. Even before the pandemic, we were facing a mental health crisis. Our nation was experiencing the highest rates of suicide uh, in the last 30 years. Opiate overdoses were regularly featured on the nightly news. And communities across the room were struggling in terms of people waiting in emergency rooms to access care. And so this is why this project is particularly important. Now, more than ever, there's a tremendous need for what we do and the care and services that we provide. This hospital campus will open later in the month. It will further expand access to our life-changing services and meeting these increasing needs. About the project itself, this is a 156,000 square foot state-of-the-art behavioral health hospital. It offers every possible treatment that exists within psychiatric and behavioral health care, and it will advance not only care that we provide, it will be the model for what is excellent care across the nation. We've done that every time we've opened a hospital, and this will be no different. Situated right here in the Baltimore-Washington corridor, this hospital includes 85 inpatient beds, four specialized outpatient programs, including programs for eating disorders, thought disorders, mood disorders, and importantly for children and adolescents, and so much more. The Shepherd Pratt Baltimore Washington campus is the first, is the first bold step of a number of key initiatives that we're gonna be announcing in the coming months as we grow and expand to meet the demands for our care and services. We will redefine that standard of excellence. And most importantly, as much as we have a building, what's really important is the care inside, the services we provide, and importantly, access to impact people. We will provide care across all ages, across all uh, diagnoses, and we'll be providing a critical access point to our community services across the state. We know that this need is even more pressing today during COVID-19, and very much like a children's hospital or a cancer hospital, this is truly a specialty hospital that's built. Thousands of meticulous decisions taken with only one thing in mind, how to provide the care and services that you or your loved one need if you're in behavioral health crisis, if you need access to those services. It is modern, it is well designed. As you walk through it, you will see treatment spaces that feel welcoming, that provide the utmost dignity and respect, and you know walking through it that the people that are working with you are the best. Why is that important? Because when it's your loved one, when it's you, you wanna make sure that your loved one has the access to the best care and services to give them the best chance of getting better and staying well. I will also say we're in this idyllic surroundings our founder, Moses Shepard, was keen on combining the best of nature, ensuring that every room has a window, that we have interior courtyards that will emanate patience and breathing and to be able to see these wooded areas and to bring nature in. As we go through this building, I'm, I'm so looking forward to the tour that we're gonna have, 
We also offer contemplative spaces, restorative spaces, where people learn skills on actually how they can manage life outside the hospital. And I will say from the most minute details as you walk through our dining areas or eateries to our nurses stations, we have had input of hundreds of our care staff who have put in decades of their lives into this work and it's designed with one thing and one thing alone. How do we provide that care that you need and that you expect? Providing that compassionate care is in our DNA as Shepherd Pratt and today begins that first step, that first bold step as we now announce new things that are going on. I'm gonna conclude by saying thank you to our board for their energy and support, particularly during a, during a global pandemic in our journey to make sure that this building got built, the campus is ready, and we're here to meet unmet needs. I also wanna thank the governor's office, all of our local and state elected officials for their support, as well as the MHCC and HSCRC for their support during construction of our new campus. This is the culmination of work of this entire team across the state over many months. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention one really important group, our employees. This last year has been challenging. However, I know that we've been able to accomplish so much. We've made the impossible truly possible each day because we've had dedicated, wonderful staff all across the state that have been able to help our most vulnerable and ensure that every service was able to stay open. These are incredible efforts that wouldn't have happened with me just saying some words, but because we have people that live the mission each day across all of our programs. And for that, I am most grateful. Through our combined efforts, I know that we can make a difference. I know that we can make a significant impact on people and bring a brighter future for our communities across the state and across the region. So with that, what I wanna just say is thank you all for coming out. This is truly a momentous day in our history. And with that, I wanna announce our board chair, Josh Kakel, to come up and say a few words. Thank you all. Thank you, Dr. Trevetti. It is a uh, pleasure to be here today to represent the Board of Trustees, and I do want to thank all of them for all of their commitment. The last 16 months have been a time of great uncertainty and incredible challenges. It's during times like these that the true character of an organization is shown. And we're reminded of our mission, our core values, and the importance of living up to them in a time of greatest need. Shepherd Pratt was founded on a set of four Quaker values, to meet a need, to lead, to care, and to respect. Its mission is to improve the quality of life of individuals and families by compassionately serving their mental health, addiction, community, special education, and community support needs. And Shepherd Pratt is needed now more than ever. Today, Shepherd Pratt serves more than 70,000 people annually, including the most vulnerable of our community. We serve people across more than 160 programs in 16 Maryland counties across 380 sites of service. Shepherd Pratt has truly put together a continuum of services to provide and support people near where they live and work, including this wonderful hospital. From inpatient care to outpatient treatment, housing, education, job training and rehabilitation services, among many other, Shepherd Pratt is providing truly life-changing care on a daily basis. With the knowledge that our services are in greater demand, the resiliency of our organization to evolve and meet the need of those we serve, including this new Baltimore Washington campus, could not come at a better time. This is a pivotal point in the time to broaden the impact of our organization and serve more people. The new hospital campus will uniquely position Shepherd Pratt to meet the ever increasing needs in our community and to provide another access point for mental health, addiction services, and outpatient care. Dr. Trevetti mentioned this bold step in Shepherd Pratt's journey, and I can tell you as a first responder, the need 
for these services is needed now more than ever. There's never been a greater need in our country for leadership and mental health and planes and helicopters. Uh, Shepherd Pratt is answering the call today with this new hospital. This, this hospital campus is a vital resource for our community and its impact will be far reaching and long lasting. Our board could not be prouder of Dr. Chavetti and his leadership team and all of the employees who have made this project possible. And I want to take one minute just to thank Tom Hess. He is a true leader that has made this happen, not single-handedly, but pretty much single-handedly. We look forward to seeing the tremendous impact this hospital campus has in the region and the critical care and services it provides. Thank you very much for having us today. Thank you so much, Chair Kakel. Uh, I'd like now, I, I would now like to ask the Honorable Dennis Schrader, Secretary of Health, to come up to the podium. Secretary Schrader. Thank you, Chair Cagle. I appreciate the opportunity to join you and other distinguished guests on this special day. Senator Ferguson, Senate President, always good to be with you, sir. Um, my good friend, Senator Gazzone, I would be remiss if I didn't uh, thank him. And then, of course, our County Executive, Ball, uh, Calvin Ball, good to see you this morning. Uh, I want to congratulate Dr. Trevetti. Josh and the entire Shepherd Pratt team on behalf of Governor Hogan. Uh, this is a remarkable day. Uh, this is a gorgeous campus, having built uh, healthcare facilities in my past experience. This is really remarkable and something to be really proud of. And it'll be instrumental in providing an array of mental health services to Maryland citizens. Having this world-class facility in Howard County, where my wife and I live, is, is also very special. And we can tell you, I can tell you, as well as saying firsthand, how remarkable the services here. Uh, and there's no question in, in our minds that this place produces results. And that's what's important. We know it, we've seen it. And uh, I wanna thank Shepard Pratt for that. Uh, as you may have heard the governor announce uh, on Tuesday, we're lifting the COVID-19 uh, state of emergency on July 1st. And we've come a long way and hit many key milestones. I want to thank uh, President Ferguson for his help with that also, as well as uh, the county executive. Uh, everybody's pulled a, uh, an oar in this process, as well as Shepard Pratt. But we have a long way to go, and we've got a lot more work to do. Uh, we are going to leave no arm behind. And we really urge everybody who has not been vaccinated to get vaccinated as soon as possible. Uh, getting vaccinated today couldn't be easier, and it's really critical. Uh, as Lieutenant Governor Rutherford, who chairs the Governor's Commission on uh, Mental and Behavioral Health, reminded us last month on Mental Health Action Day that all we have all been through this past uh, year has uncovered new challenges in maintaining our mental health. Stress and worry about con contracting uh, COVID-19, the devastation of losing uh, a loved one. We've lost uh, a lot of people over 9,400, uh, which is tragic. And a host of other factors have had a significant impact on mental health during the pandemic. We need more facilities like this and greater access to crisis services around the state, and especially in light of the COVID-19 pandemic. If for whatever reason you or a family member or a friend have been foregoing mental health treatment or may need assistance now, the state of Maryland and partners like Shepard Pratt are here for you. Uh, again, congratulations to everyone at Shepard Pratt. I can't say how important this institution is to this state. Its footprint is ubiquitous and provides results every day. So we're looking forward to working with you further and the additional assistance that this uh, facility will provide to the state. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Secretary Schrader. Uh, I will say your collaboration, your willingness to look for solutions 
and most importantly, understanding what people need has been so instrumental. So thank you for what you're doing for the overall care across our state. I'd now like to ask uh, the Honorable Bill Ferguson, President of the Maryland Senate, to come up and say a few remarks. Welcome. Good morning. It is such a pleasure to be here with each of you in this, uh, this is what a remarkable day. I mean, I think this is just, it is, uh, it is the sign of new beginnings, uh, the, the afterworld where we are going to be processing what each of us has been experiencing over this last year, something that, you know, I don't think anybody, humanity had not faced over the last hundred years. Uh, Dr. Trevetti said it so well of this moment in time and the challenges that we know are ahead. Uh, Josh, thank you for your leadership to help see this through. Um, my good friend and colleague, Cal Calvin, Exe uh, Calvin Executive, uh, County Executive Calvin Ball, uh, and Secretary Schrader, the entire administration, just uh, you know, cannot thank you enough for, for this moment. Um, I do, as the, as, the, as the sole representative of the Maryland General Assembly, uh, we do have some incredible uh, colleagues here today, and I know members of the House uh, have been recognized. I see Delegate Atterbury and, and Delegate Ebersol, you know, giving tips and pointers in the back there. Uh, I know Delegate Pena Melnick was here. Uh, I know uh, uh, Delegate Feldman and Terrassa, uh, Delegate Hill. Uh, who knows the, the importance of, of mental health in the whole, the whole body, uh, that it is not physical health and mental health, it is just about health. Um, we also have some remarkable, remarkable senators. And look, County Executive Ball, you are very blessed to have one of the most effective delegations uh, representing your county. Of course, we have Senator Hester, uh, who is, while new, just been incredibly a champion um, for mental health, for the wraparound services that are required, and really thinking differently, particularly around schools and how we can think about making sure our kids have what they need. And another doctor in the General Assembly, our, our resident physician, Senator Lamb, um, and of course, those who have been a part of this process, our capital budget chair, uh, Senator Doug Peters, and Senator our President Pro Tem, Melanie Griffith, who uh, has been working on health care issues for many, many years. But of course, I would be remiss to not thank one of my closest friends and colleagues and just a true champion, not just for Howard County, not just for the state, and not just for this facility, but for looking at the vision for the future of Maryland, somebody that truly understands the depth of needs. Senator Guy Gazzoni, who chairs our budget committee, uh, who is intimately aware of this project, but just generally is such a leader on every single front when it comes to thinking about what does our future look like. Uh, this is a really special day. Um, and I'm gonna sort of ask a question because uh, Senator Gazzoni, when I was talking about what I may uh, remark about today, uh, tried to steal the thunder and, and give a story. How many folks know about Moser Moses Shepherd? How many folks know? I, I hope a fair number, given the number of uh, Shepard Pratt. Um, there were a few things that I learned, um, and he was recently a part of a book that I, that I read. Uh, well, first off, he retired when he was 36, which, you know, did something right. Um, but, uh, you know, he was in a place where he was a merchant and somebody who was in commercial trade, a Quaker, an abolitionist. Um, but at 36, all of a sudden, had come into this wealth and had realized, you know, what do I do now? Where do I go? Uh, and was appointed to be the commissioner for the Baltimore City Detention Facility. Um, so this is back in the late 1840s, um, and or excuse me, probably a little bit earlier, probably about the 1820s. And as the commissioner for Baltimore City, what he saw were individuals who were being detained and, and, and incarcerated for mental health issues, and simply said, this doesn't work. What are we doing? This isn't who we are. That's, this isn't what we should do. We, we should have the dignity of life and people. This is 1820. For the next 30 years, he thought about what would a different way look like. For 30 years, he partnered and had conversations about how can we truly respect the individual? How can we look at their needs and provide the services that they need to reach their God-given potential? And in 1853, he came to the Maryland General Assembly and said, uh, with, with several partners and was chartered and Shepard Pratt was born to be that place a new standard, the first in the country, the first in the world, to say that every single human being, no matter their challenges, no matter their race, no matter their zip code, no matter their good days, no matter their bad days, every single person has the, must have the opportunity to maximize their God-given potential. That was 170 years ago. Here today, in this moment, we celebrate that sentiment in a very similar moment where we are questioning 
law enforcement and mental health and how do we serve people. It was Moses Shepherd back in 1850 that said, we can do this differently. Today, we stand on those shoulders with modern day leaders, with those who see the future and say, we can do better. Folks, this is what better looks like. This is what we do in the state of Maryland. We dream, we work, and we get it done. I'm so thankful for each and every one of you. I'm thankful for my colleagues. Uh, it is just such an honor to be in a state with such leaders who see the future that we get to celebrate today at present. Thank you so much uh, for all of your contributions to this project. Thank you so much, Senator Ferguson, for being with us today and also reminding us of what's made today possible. I thank you for the interest, instrumental support that you've provided in increasing mental health access, expanding broadband access as well. I will say, you know, during COVID, we've provided over a half a million telehealth visits. It's that broadband access that's allowed us to get into the most vulnerable neighborhoods across the state, and we thank you. I'd now like to ask the Honorable Calvin Ball, Howard County Executive, uh, to come up and say a few remarks. Welcome. Thank you so much, Dr. Trevetti. Uh, greatly appreciate everyone being here. Um, it is a beautiful day in Howard County to celebrate the opening of Shepherd Pratt's Baltimore, Washington campus. And uh, this is a great need for this facility. And Howard County was proud to contribute approximately a million dollars to the construction of this new building. I want to thank Dr. Trevetti and your entire team for making this vision a reality. And I just want to not only echo the thanks from the previous speakers, Mr. President, Mr. Secretary, and others, uh, but I also want to just acknowledge and, and thank a, a few other people. Uh, former Howard County Executive Ken Ullman, who's here, uh, he was here where I am when this idea was but a whisper. And he helped give voice to that to get us here today. And also, now Delegate Jessica Feldmark, who was Chief of Staff at that time, who helped move that forward. And then I just have to take one quick point of personal privilege and thank uh, Carl DiLorenzo, who is my Director of Policy. His office is right next to mine. And his office is the one that I go to and I say things like, I want to address all of the behavioral and mental health challenges in the state. I want to end chronic homelessness. I want to make sure that we address all of the opioid and uh, drug misuse issues. And Carl just says, yes, sir, and he gets to working on it. Uh, Shepard Pratt, as Senate President uh, Ferguson indicated, has a deep history of providing high quality mental and behavioral health services in Howard County. And this new building will enable you to do even more and even better than before. Mental health has been, as I indicated, a key priority of my administration. I understand how challenging it is to have those available services. We've all heard too many stories of residents searching for help, and we know this pandemic has further exacerbated those challenges. Providers are limited, wait times are too long, and affordability frequently limits families' options even further. Since the start of the pandemic, Howard County has seen a 45% increase in the number of families seeking intensive behavioral health services for their children who aren't able to access them. We also found through our needs assessment that long first appointment wait times is one of the main barriers that families face when seeking care for their children, with some having to wait several months to be treated. And that's why I'm especially appreciative of the Psychiatric Urgent Care Unit. The need for urgent mental health services is a huge gap in our county, and I believe that this unit gets us on a path of making mental health services more readily available when people need them. 
This new hospital will help expand our continuum of care by adding much needed crisis beds, which are in short supply in our county. With the recent federal data showing that 40% of adults have a behavioral health condition and over 10% having considered suicide just in the past 30 days alone, now is the time for Howard County to be proactive in its mental health response and continue this expanded partnership with Shepherd Pratt. The opening of this hospital is a giant leap in that response, and we will be a place where everyone can thrive and receive the support that they need. The toll in this pandemic that is taken on mental health for our children, our older adults, people with disabilities, and frankly, our family, friends, and neighbors of all walks of life, all socioeconomic levels will need to be addressed for the foreseeable future. The need is real and it will take many of us to address it. So I look forward to this ongoing partnership with Shepherd Pratt to ensure all of our residents and our visitors are healthy and thriving. Hope is on the horizon and we are on the road to recovery. And together we can help current and future generations live their very best lives. It's my honor now, I'd like to invite you up to read a certificate of recognition. Come on up. It's not that long. It's only about 30 pages. To launch the new phase of mental health resources in Howard County, Maryland, this certificate is hereby presented on the 17th day of June, 2021, to acknowledge Shepherd Pratt's Baltimore, Washington campus's grand opening. Shepherd Pratt is a vital community partner offering critical mental health resources to those individuals and families facing mental health crisis and treatment in Howard County and throughout our entire region. This new state-of-the-art facility in Elkridge both advances and expands Howard County's ability to address the growing need for mental health services with added beds, specialties, and urgent care close by. I'm proud to celebrate with the dedicated leadership and staff that provided these accessible resources and services on a beautiful private campus in our great county. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, County Executive Ball, for your support throughout the pandemic and, we can, and making sure that we can continue providing life-changing uh, services. Senator Cardin was not able to join us today. Uh, I will read an excerpt that he, uh, of a letter that he shared with us, and he wanted to make sure that you all uh, could hear some of these words. The services offered by Shepard Pratt and the staff providing those services are recognized throughout the country for excellence in both delivery and care. Maryland is so fortunate to be home to this outstanding institution, which has dramatically advanced quality of mental health care across the nation. Shepard Pratt's founders were deeply concerned with treating patients with respect and dignity and providing the resources that could, be that could be devoted to education and research. Those values continue and are a cornerstone of Shepard Pratt today. We appreciate all of you. We appreciate our senators. We appreciate all of our elected officials. This is a joint project. Uh, things like this don't happen without the wonderful collaboration of so many, including community partners. I want to thank everyone for joining us today for this special day. And so now I say with support of our board, elected officials, staff, and others in the community, we all have the opportunity to improve the lives of individuals, their families, and our broader community. We are not only meeting a need today, we are so determined to do more. Shepard Pratt is a, signing, is a shining example of what a true care system can be and is a beacon of hope for so many across the nation. Now more than ever, we are the trusted resource that our friends, family, and neighbors turn to in their moment of greatest need. I'd like to now ask all of our elected officials to please come up as we will be cutting the ribbon 
after we do that, I'm going to ask all of our trustees to come up so we can have a photo with them. And then immediately following that, uh, if you look on your name tag, there's a number uh, that coincides with your tour number. We have wonderful people with uh, these uh, numbered paddles, uh, almost as if you were in a silent auction. Uh, tour one will be starting as soon as we get through the ribbon cutting in the first photo. Light refreshments will be served in the tent behind you. I will say it is great to see you all in person after about 15 months. Please linger. Please uh, cherish each other. And most importantly, let's celebrate what we can all do together to make a difference in other people's lives. Uh, I, mean, I welcome all of our elected officials up to the uh, ribbon 